Touch the Lord. Yes, Father. Lord, the Holy Ghost, I pray, God. Touch the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
And I begin to think, what is the greatest commandment? Uh -huh. What is the greatest commandment? We know what that is. It's to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with That's all it. thy mind, and with all thy soul, right? right. Yeah. And we know that, and he said, and the second is the greatest like this, right. is to what? Come on. What's the second one? Come on, church. Love thy neighbors as yourself. Amen. How many knows that we try to do that, those that are born again? Come on, but the Lord began to unfold some things in front of my face this week, and it had me on my knees and weeping and, and just sorrowful. On, because how many knows that we we have been so blessed, sister, yeah. that we can become a little bit of a stiff yeah. people? Hey, the Lord got on this sister, so if he gets on you, you can just be right there with me. We'll just have some tore up bridges, okay? Amen. But the Lord began to get on to me a little bit. Amen. You can be so blessed and so favored of God, and he can pour it out so Come strong on, so upon you, and we can get in the flesh in an instant, yes. and we forget to love thy neighbor. Come on, we forget what the commission was all about, you see, because we had a call on our life. That's to go forth and proclaim the gospel of Come Jesus on, Christ. Yes. What the, the, the angel that had come and, and shown the message to John, and he said, he bowed down and worshiped, and he says, No, I'm not the one you should be worshiping right now. He said, But the, the, but the testimony of Jesus Christ is the, uh, the spirit of prophecy. That's what should come forth. That's what the proclaiming of the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. That's the prophet, prophecy of the spirit right there. But how many times do we forget to be that witness? Come on, come on. How many times do we forget to be that witness? Come on. That's right. I said, oh God. Yes. Lord, don't let me be a stiff necked people. No, God no. Don't let me be a stiff necked people. I had a young man, well, not a young minister, but I had a minister and his wife come before me. And he began to say, well, they're just a bit of a little bit in the pruning season, you see. I have an accounting office, but then I also work two shifts in the ER a week. I'm a busy body, I know. <laughs> but as he began to share with me, he said, I, I just want to share this with you. He said, I know you don't know them. He said, so I won't break confidence that way. He says, but this is something that I've gone with. And he, he began to get a little bit weepy-eyed as he sat there at my desk. And he says, you know, we've been pastoring for many years. And I said, yes, sir. He said, I had this young man begin to come to my church. And he says that he doesn't want to do any better. He does just enough to get by. He'll pick up cans. He said, and the congregation has not liked that. And they've made a big fuss about this. I've tried to be a light for him and witness him and bring him to the salvation of Christ. He said, we've had some more in our fellowships. Hold on, we're getting somewhere. Come on, they made the best of He said, we begin to have fellowship dinners on the quarter. And he said, and some of the congregation didn't like some of the outsiders in the neighborhood beginning oh, to come in and, and fellowship and feast with us. And as I sit there and I said, oh, whoa, unto them. That's right, see Whoa, unto That's them. Right. I said, I'm going to tell you something, brother. I said, Jesus come for those that had need of a position. I said, those are the ones that we should be going to the That's highways right. and That's byways. Right. Oh, let me tell you right. something much greater Man. than what you're facing right now. That's right. He said, but I want you to know that young man was hit by a car this week. His life was taken. And this pastor and his wife were called to speak. At, it was a small group because... He was just like a little homeless man. Right, right. But about 30 people, he said, showed up. Mm -hmm. 30 people showed up. I believe this was yesterday. They all began to lift up their voices and say, what a nice man come on, he come was. On, come on, come on. What a nice man he was right, and how he had right. been coming to their church. Come on, there you go. Oh, and how he had given his life over to the Lord. Oh, he began to clean up on the outside after the inside, you see, had gotten right, cleansed. Right. He began to get some of that Jesus on the inside. On, he began to bathe. He began to want to do better. He would even help the elderly uh, people at the church. He come to know salvation. And as that man began to close in the circle,
service. He said, God, just let me sit there and see the fruit what my God can do. I said, oh, God, don't let me become stiff now. Don't let me miss out on the call that you've called your people for. See, oh, Moses, when he went to the mound on behalf of the people, the Lord gave me this part of the message weeks ago, tried to teach it in the Sunday school. It wouldn't work, sister. Wasn't time to share it. He said, you tell them to clean up. That's right. And on that third day, I'll come down on the mountain and I'll commune with come them. On, That's right. I told the Sunday school class, I said, that the one thing that stood out with me in that story is what whenever the thunder and the manifestation of God begin to come upon that mount, you begin to see a people back away from the presence of God. You begin to see a people back away because see, commandment comes forth and conviction falls when there's a manifestation of the Spirit of God. They said, whatever he says, we'll do. But let him speak with you, Moses, and not with us. Is that not a stiff-necked stiff people? A people that's called by God. I said, all right. After the pastor and his wife begins to leave, I got on my face because, see, the whole time he's telling me the story, I begin to see an addict that I've been wore out with, wore out with, coming Come to that ER over and over again. And I begin to see his faint body. See, in the Holy Ghost, I begin to see him yep. laying on Come that on. bed. And I said, oh, God. I said, please, Lord, move upon his body today. Yes. I said, whatever you do, if he takes one more hit, don't let him go out. Don't let hell enlarge yourself. Oh. And God, if you'll give me one more chance, I promise I'll be at that bedside and I'll be testifying of the, of the testimony of Jesus Christ. I said, I believe in God. You're going to raise him up. Yes. more. Oh, ain't it a stiff-necked people that we become sometimes and we forget to call. Yeah, man. What did he say? For the anointing is upon me to preach the gospel, to bring good tidings, to loosen those that are bound up, to have healing for those that are afflicted. You got the scripture. I didn't write all this down, but oh well, I know you know the word of God. I begin to see another one. See that I bypassed this week. This week. Come on. Because I couldn't take the smell of the aroma. We're getting somewhere. Hold right. oh, on. We're getting Come somewhere. On. Come on. I said, oh God. Oh God, that's a soul. That's it. That's right. How many times are we bypassing these people? The Lord began to pour into my spirit this week. We've talked about all the gatherings. You see it all over social media. Right. All these groups and all these, these worship services and, and all these revivals sprouting up everywhere. I text out in our church group text. I said one thing that the Lord has spoken to me this morning is that the fields are as wide the harvest may be. If the scriptures ever been fulfilled, it is this day that we see an outpouring a people that are still hungry for God. And if they can gather them up over there in those cities, I'm telling you, we ought to have this church house for them. Because I tell you, there are people that are homeless on every street. There's an addict on every street. There is the sick and the afflicted on every street. It is time that the church arrives up to the fall. And that we take our march and we get out into the hallways and the byways. And we begin to compel them to come. I know a man that can call the raging sin. I know a man that can raise up the dead. I know a man that can deliver an act. Hallelujah. 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 I said, oh God. Oh God, what is this? What is this sound in the Holy Ghost that I begin to hear? I lay in the bed sleeping at night and I said, oh God. Oh God, it was something in my sleep and it was so powerful. And have you ever thought your subconscious come true just a little bit? And I said, whoa, this is good stuff. I need to write this down. But I was too sleepy to get up and write. I texted my mom and I said, whoa, something's, whoa, it's good. I said, I just don't remember what it was. I began to hear Paul Revere. 
Yeah. I Come thought, on. remember, I'm simple minded. Come on, that's right. When the Lord yeah. ministers to this country girl, simple. Paul Revere. Yeah. Well, he was the midnight rider. Oh, you know, right? So, the you Lord, I, he began to get into the history books. I said, Lord, you speaking. Ooh, let's get the Bible out. Let's get the, the Google out. Let's get into history mode. Yeah. Let's go, Lord. Yeah. Let's go. Saddle up, boys. Amen. We're just going to ride out. Yeah. We're going to declare to you we in the midnight hour. Yeah. It's time to get ready, church. I'm going to read you some scripture. Ooh, hallelujah. Yes. I keep hearing, go out and warn. You better compel them. Get ready, church. Get ready, church. Because what did old Joshua God said? Oh, I miss to see you over here. Oh, to an area that ain't been touched yet. They haven't been conquered yet. But I miss to see you over there. I'm here to tell you, church. The Lord is getting us ready. Yes. We fix to go and we fix to see things, sister. We fix to see people come in. You know the man called Legion? You know the man called Legion? Well, let me tell you something, church. You better get filled up that you come so Lord. You see, revival has a root word and it's called revive. And it's time that the mission of the church be revived. It's time that it be resurrected up within us. Because we got a call to do. And you see, they're going to begin to come through the doors. They're going to begin to come through the doors. There's going to be legions out there. There's going to be smelly people. Not in the physical, but in the spiritual eye. You see, you won't be able to smell them spirits a mile away. Who oh, was this the man that said the other night, we're going to pray for discernment. Amen. Come on. Oh, sister, if it ain't lined up, I don't know what it is. Oh, it is time, church. It is time. We're going to see this. You see, we in the end times and the enemy knows yes. that it's times about limits. Right, right. So we're going to be some Paul Revere's. Yes. We're going to saddle up, sister. We're going to saddle up. Yes. I kept hearing in the Holy Ghost, arise. Yeah. Arise. Yeah. Arise. Yeah. Yes. Isaiah 51. For says, hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a lot of the people. My righteousness is near, and my salvation is gone forth. And my arms shall judge the people. The isles, which means nations, shall wait upon me. And on my arms shall they trust. Verse 9 says, awake and awake. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of a great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea away for a ransom to pass over? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head, and, their, and they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Right. Verse 17 Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 52, 1. Awake, awake, put on thy street, O Zion. Put on the beautiful garments. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. Oh, hallelujah. That published salvation yeah. that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Oh, thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing, for they yeah. shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing yeah. together. Hallelujah. You waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath com comforted his people. He hath redeemed, O oh, Jerusalem. Yeah. Yes, yes, oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Brother, you confirmed it when you begin to talk about the deep waters. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Sister, may I be obedient? Yeah. Oh, obedience. Because, I, hey, if I don't, Whatever don't happen that's supposed Come to happen, on, that blood's gonna be on my hands. Right, I'm man. gonna be obedient to Come what on. God has for that's His right. people. Come yes. on. Come on now. Hallelujah. Preach. Bless your God. Bless your God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, look. Jesus. 
Praise God, praise God. God. Bless your Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Ooh, I can feel the burning of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to begin to read this last part of Scripture. You see, in these end times, what we're about to face, God's wanting His people to come on into the deep. Come on, come on, man. That's right. We don't need it. And you say, well, sister, I've already got the Holy Ghost and that's good. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord said, be a Paul Revere and go warn my people. Amen. And I'm telling you that we need more. Amen. We need more. Amen. If we're going to reach the lost, the weak, and the weary, yeah. the oppressed, the depressed, the menace, <laughs> we're going to need more of him than we've Amen. ever had before. Amen. 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 You talking about doing the victory march, brother? That's right. right. Had a young lady tell me one time, my baby Samuel back there was sick, sick, sick when the Lord gave him to me. And I would weep at that altar and hold him in my arms, his right. little frail body. She said, you keep doing the victory march. I'm here to declare to you that he is nine years old today. He'll be ten on May the 1st. Amen. But I'm going to tell you that we no longer have to see a pulmonologist for those moms. We no longer have to see a cardiologist for that heart. We no longer have to see a psychologist to get him to speak because the little boy that never spoke now talks more and never takes a breath. The little boy that could not swing in a swing up until about three months ago now knows how to swing, push, and pull as a mama. But I did that big green march, honey. Every time I would forget, the Lord would let that word that she spoke over me and him resurrect up within my soul. And there I'd take off around that altar, weeping in a crime with my hands lifted high. I said, I declare victory. I declare victory. I declare victory. And I'm telling you that we're going to declare victory. We're going to be like the old Hannah coming up to the altar saying, oh, Eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, 
And the waters came down from under the right side of the house and the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looked eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward and he measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Now I want you to think spiritual now. Think spiritual. Something about this life. Whew. Afterward he measured a thousand and it was a river and I could not pass. For the waters were risen waters to swim in i skipped a few but we know it it goes on to the knees yeah. and it goes on to the thigh right. and now it's over there where the waters is i can swim in them. Right. a river that could not be passed over right. i don't know about you but whenever i begin to read this i know what it's talking about right. but the deep calling to the deep come on that's how it's that's that okay there's something about intercessory prayer. Okay? We're going to intercede on behalf of a nation, on, 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 on behalf of a, a bride, on behalf of a people that are called by his name. Sister Phillips, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing people back up away from the mountain. Amen. When the manifestation of the Holy right. Ghost falls right. in a church service. Right. Right. I don't want no part of that altar service. I'm going to sit back here. I've done been baptized and I got filled with the Holy Ghost years ago and I'm okay right here. No, ma'am, you're not. Amen. You need to get on up to the point where you can't swim no more. Where you are in complete, total surrender to the, to the Lord. That He can minister unto you. That He can fill you. He can equip you. Because there's a call on your life. You need deep water. Deep, deep, deep water. Come on, church. Let's pray. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be a Hannah tonight. And I'm going to pray. 